between media and some of the news. Uh, uh, um, uh, but what are your th- official thoughts? I know that I freaked out, but I really don't like a bully. Uh, what do you What do you think? What's going on here, brother? And by the way, what? how are you? I'm I'm fantastic. So I'll, I'll be brief because uh, I, I tweeted out a few things because I was a part of student media, and I've also been you know part of like professional media right big j journalism is what they call it correct big j capital j journalism okay i also have an i also have a journalism degree blake you don't say holy moly and you know what it's worth nothing (laughs) 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 look hey no 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 no. i will say this i will say this (laughs) In, in all seriousness i am a very happy Manship School of Mass Communication graduate, right? And I used to do shows in Hodges Hall, which, you know, is a student journalism site. And I'm telling you, the student media people are around are still working in media today. One of them is working like CB. He's a lead producer of CBS, like news, everything. And uh, a lot of my friends that were with the Reveille, they're all doing big things. And I worked in in radio and I had a bunch of radio and broadcasting friends go on and do big things. One of my best friends works for the Minnesota Vikings now, you know, and she's like their official broadcaster. So look, I've been on multiple sides of this and I've also made student journalism mistakes. The one thing you don't do, the childish thing, the student mistake is ethering these young men uh, or, or women, I had one of the reporters reach out to me. So I I, I, I I said a tweet and I said, if there's any student journalists that want to reach out to me, and one of them did, and I won't say who, uh, because there, there's, there's no reason to ether these kids. Mistakes are made, right? I made them. Everybody made them. This was the most childish thing I think I've seen. This high horse noble act. It's all BS. Nobody gives a rip. Nobody gives a flying you know what about it. And this is coming from someone who has a journalism degree. And yes, those students made a mistake. They shouldn't have done what they did. But really, it wasn't the most raw, raw Homer kind of thing. So yes, I'm no longer officially a journalist. I don't claim to be a journalist. But you know, I've I've, I've covered Congress. I've been on Capitol Hill. I, I I've I've done actual journalistic things. And look. There are some things that are very serious, and there are some journalists out there who do unbelievable work in politics and sports. But covering a, a basketball game or even a football game, uh, student journalists are going to make mistakes. It's not as important. So, it drove it, Blake. I had a phone call with you earlier today. I'm not going to say what I said on the phone call. What I'm gonna, uh, on here, that was really low blow. I, 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 I've lost a lot of respect for those uh, those two older reporters i know people are ready to move on and talk about other stuff that that to me was just really 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 bad mentorship but on this i know people are probably tired of this topic but thanks for giving me this platform to sound off and if there are if there are any student journalists feel free to reach out because i've made those mistakes before myself but twitter wasn't around then for older reporters to ether me into the high heavens like they did no doubt it's it's horrible but Blake, I'm really excited here to talk about some football. Uh, I, I, I'm i not a baseball guy. I am excited to see my guy Trey Morgan balling out with the great hair. That was one of the sickest plays I've ever seen, Blake. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Sliding I, and, and, and sidearming that thing. I was like, man, that looked like freaking Ernie Banks out there making that okay. play. Uh, okay. I was like, holy crap. So I, I, I guess I got to get myself to the box to see uh, – uh, Trey Morgan play. I'm excited, but football, football. I'm ready, I'm ready to talk football. I'm sorry. He's the baseball Michael Vick. That's what I'm. Man. That's the, that's the huh? swag he plays huh? with. Like that's that's what I'm going to call Trey Morgan. Is the baseball's Michael Vick. But Carter, let's go to there. Look, um, one thing that's interesting, and I said this a little bit today, and I want to get your thoughts on this. Getting into football, uh, L- does LSU need Jaden Daniels more than Jaden Daniels needs LSU? You know, the, the thought process that I had was just because, like, look, man, I mean, you've had issues at that position. Can he come in and solidify it? Uh, I think that they that we maybe have needed him more than he needed us. But what do you think? Yeah, I, I 
Jaden Daniels does a lot for your offense as far as like the zone read game is concerned. I've also reached out to a few people I trust in the Pac-12 and on our channel, we've done, you know, some deep analytical dives on EPA per play and the interceptions and all these different things that happened to him, Blake. Right, right. And I've got to say for two and a half years of his career, he had no turnover issues. It was his final few games where the team – just kind of lost it, started playing for themselves, was when his interception problem started to happen. So Mm -hmm. I'm slowly talking myself into being a Jaden Daniels believer for this one thing, Blake, Mm -hmm. is Kayshawn was every bit as good as a Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase when he was healthy, just looking at the raw numbers. Now, he needs to come out and ball out so he can, you know, stay on that echelon. But when you just look at the raw numbers, he was that dominant with a lesser quarterback. Jack Besh had one of the best true freshman seasons we've ever seen. You look at his man coverage, uh, uh, his ability to break man coverage and get open, his ability to be physical and like to hit. Uh, I, I just like the way that that kid plays. So that's two really big bonafide weapons. And... I, I mean, obviously, Kayshawn ceiling can't get any higher. We've seen him you know, already break records. I still think Jack Besher's ceiling has not been reached. I, I'm a big believer in what that young man could do uh, for LSU next year. And then from there, you know, you get Malik, you get BTJ, obviously Kyron Lacey in the news right now. Uh, and then, obviously, you, you have Jure Jenkins there. So maybe it's not Jaden Daniels so much. It's what's going to surround him next year. And I think, and I, I feel comfortable saying this now, especially considering Bama has to reload at wide receiver. LSU has by far the best set of receivers in in the SEC. No and, and and if you go look into like deeper statistics, let's take a, a metric. Let's go back to Pro Football Focus. They have a stat called WAA wins Love above it. Love wins it. above average. Okay, the second most valuable position in college football is the wide receiver position. Interesting. And it makes a lot of sense, right? We had Joe, and then we had the best set of receivers ever in the NFL, like rookie wide receivers ever. That's an objective fact. Um, and uh, you saw those guys really carry us to uh, a national championship. So, you know, think of it the same way with Jane Daniels. He may not have to be Burrow good for Jack and Kayshawn and Jare and those guys to carry us to potentially, hopefully, a nine win season next year, nine or 10. Okay, so that's a that's a lot to break down. So let's break that down bit by bit. Um, I agree with you. I Carter, look, and I, I do remember that there was a six two and a half, six three, uh, two hundred eighty seven pound off at former offensive lineman who told you Jane Daniels was a baller. I nah, will digress nah. on that. Nah, nah, uh, but nah. however, uh, but Carter, here's the thing, and I agree with you. He can get away with some things here that he couldn't get away with at Arizona State, meaning. Right. Like some of the RPOs that I've seen Mike Denbrock run, look, you may call it an RPO, but like a, a small little tunnel screen on the outside while you're running a zone read, he pulls it, then he throws it out to Kayshawn Bouti. That, in, in essence, okay, is still under the RPO play call or play card sheet. Right. Um, yeah. Do you believe – and, I again, I don't want to overreact to this, but we're going to start getting in this, and Brian Kelly's going to be talking tomorrow. Do you think that we're going to know right away what this offense is going to do? Because Brian Kelly's given us more access than we've ever had in the last 20 years. Like, literally, the most access that we've ever right. had. I mean, we're going to know very quickly what this team's all about from the offensive side and what really their strengths and weaknesses are going to be on that side, right? Yeah, I think so. And And, look – this is where uh, Brad Davis plays a huge role this spring. And this is going to be the toughest thing for him, right? He is the only non-new position coach. right? And I think Brian Kelly is going to really push Brad Davis and say, look, let's go into this tabula rasa. Let's go into this clean slate, okay? Give me the five best guys that we can possibly put on the field to take us to the next level. Obviously, a guy like Tyler Steen, if you're able to land him, that changes a lot for what you're going to do next year. But look, 
Let, let's take LSU's RPO numbers, right? There's a, a really good friend of mine. His name's CFB Numbers. He does really good analytical work. And I looked at one of his charts, and I, I, I asked you this question a few weeks ago, Blake. This I was blew so my wrong. Okay. <laughs> I was so wrong. So, so, so I asked Blake this question, and I want people in the chat right now. I see a lot of uh, my viewers in here, and then obviously a lot of your, your viewers bleed over in here as well. I want everyone in the chat right now to guess out of 129 college football teams last year, where did LSU rank? in RPO pass efficiency out of every team in college football. Have you said this on your show, Carter? What? Have you have you talked about this on your show? Have you yeah, had, yeah, yeah. Okay. I brought it okay. up. And we're, we're, gonna, so, we're, gonna talk, we're, we're gonna talk about this tonight. Okay. Okay. If, if you were to guess, I want everyone in the chat right now to guess. <laughs> now, now Chris English firing so, off the top. So well, look, 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 very quickly, Carter. We got my answer. Okay, that I sent you. This was pretty much the exact same text I sent you. Uh, and then Chris English fires off fifth. <laughs> well, Chris, Chris is one of those bleed over guys who watches you. Correct, your channel, Correct. Watches. he is. So, so he knows I've talked about this. Um, so we see a lot of people, you know, guessing 47, 48, 10th, 68th, 100th. Uh, Bo, oh, this is so funny from Bo Landry. Shout out to you, Bo. That's such a great name. B E A. You you X like, just put an X there at the end, Bo. Go all in. Go right. all in, Bo. I mean, you got to put the X. Uh, X uh, gonna give it to you. X gonna give it to. I love it, man. Uh, look, the answer is actually fifth. So LSU had the fifth best passing offense when it comes to EPA per play, which is an efficiency stat, uh, expected points added. Right. So that was with Max Johnson. At quarterback. And if right. you go back and you look at the, the actual plays themselves, you saw LSU was able to manufacture some RPO touchdowns. Devonta Lee's first touchdown of the year was on an RPO okay. versus Central Michigan, right? Uh, or the, the, the big touchdown to Kayshawn to start off the second half versus Mississippi State was an RPO, right? And LSU did a lot of good things, not only with the RPO pass, but also just running uh, a simple RPO where you're looking at the the running back and you're also the wide receiver runs a slant it, it's not rocket science right and what's very interesting about that is you know th that's not an overly complicated offense to run and what's very interesting about that is you don't necessarily need a mobile quarterback to run so you know as much as uh as we like Jaden Daniels to potentially be the guy next year you don't have to have a mobile quarterback to do the RPO offense, but I will say this, Blake, to your point, it does make it more effective, right? Because you, you can get the zone read out of it, um, and uh, you could just do so much more stuff out of it. But it is very interesting that a lot of those wide receivers in particular that were really effective in the RPO, the two in particular, Kayshawn and Jack, are back next year, and they're hungry, and they're ready to go. So it makes you really excited about – what Brian Kelly's going to do, and hopefully he does keep that RPO going uh, for LSU moving forward. So uh, one more question for me, Carter, and then we're going to fire in. We got a lot of questions coming in yeah, to you ahead. from the chat. Um, do you remember uh, – let me ask you very quickly. You are you are a big Colts fan, correct, or am I wrong with that? Or, or were you a big Colts Peyton Manning fan? Or did yeah, I just oh, make yeah. – Okay. Yeah. I love so him. Love him. Here's, what I, here's what I think about the RPO. And Peyton talked about this more than what we see with the today's RPO was, is remember when Peyton and them used to run play action, they would pull a guard and they would fake it and then they would throw a slant or a dig or, or a drag route right behind it. He actually called that an RPO because based off what the defense gave him, even though he had the ba his back to the defense, when he's doing the play fake, what they how they would react is how he would do things. And that was coming in from out of center. Now, Carter, this is what I'm going to say to you, and this is just my belief. It's the modern-day triple option. You're either going to give it, you're going to pull it, you're going to throw the slant, or you're going to run. That's it. You legitimately have two or, at max, four options on that read. There's not more than four. So would you – football is very cyclical. Right. It, would you call it today's modern day triple option? Yeah, it's it's very similar to that. But here's the thing, right? Uh, Blake, I shared a conversation with you earlier to, today, 
uh, I'm lucky to know a lot of offensive coordinators, right? And you know, I I I, I get their feedback mm-hmm. off name of drop name. <laughs> drop. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing: some I'm of them joking. some of them are professional uh, coaches in Europe. Some of them are professional coaches in Canada. Some coach in the states, right? And, you know, I keep them anonymous for reasons because, you know, they, they can get critical of certain things or whatever. But th- they do a good job of explaining this to me. Uh, you know, I, I do a lot of film breakdowns and stuff, and uh, it, it's, it's very interesting how complex offense gets. But the most important thing is to make sure you find something you're good at and Correct. develop that. And look – Sean McVay did not reinvent the did not reinvent the wheel with this offense. Now his play calling can suck sometimes, but it's a very simple offense, right? So, no doubt. Uh, so that's going to be the big thing for for LSU. Find something that works for them, practice it, and go from there. And I I, I can't wait to see it. it. It's a very weird time because we were in the same position last year with two new offensive and defensive coordinators that we really didn't know exactly what they were going to do. I know it's kind of a scary point in time, but it does make me feel a little bit more comfortable that Brian Kelly's leading that charge as an actual former play caller, both sides of the football compared to Ed Orgeron, who wasn't ever a play caller. And I think that's part of the reason why things started to get so sour last year, Blake, is that, you had two first-year Power 5 play callers. It's not so much that Durante and Jake weren't the absolute best or most consistent. Is that the head coach on top of them had uh, did, has never called play. Correct. Either. Just didn't know so, what to do. Let's just call it what it is. So, uh, look, there's plenty of skepticism about Matt House, about what he's going to do defensively. I'm one of those. Uh, I'm one of those guys that, that that's going to be very interested to see what he's going to do but it does help having a head coach who's a little bit more X and O savvy. Very quickly, and then I'm going to tell Zach to bring up some of these Carter uh, hashtag Ask Carter questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm basing this opinion. We're not going to go deep into it tonight. LSU has the best defensive line in the country. I'm going to leave it. On today's date of our Lord, 322-22, let me write this down in my handy-dandy notebook. Blake Rafino said – that LSU has the best defensive line in the country. So, Carter, I want you to keep me accountable since we were yeah. talking about Big J journalism earlier. Uh, 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 call me out uh, if and when I'm wrong. Um, Zach, fire in some of these questions for, um, for our Carter, <laughs> and you can bring your beautiful mug on the screen if you want to uh, to ask him the questions yourself here. There you go. What's All up? right, so we got this one. What's up, Carter? How you doing, man? Doing good, man. Let me know. I'll do. I'll do your show whenever, man. Uh, I, I like what you guys are doing, and congrats on joining AYS, man. This is such a cool uh, thing. I appreciate it's it. It's good seeing you on the come up, man. Go right on ahead. Thanks, man. Well, we got Ryan Thibodeau in here. He's asking, "Ask Carter, do you see Besh as a better slot raw receiver or outside receiver?" I think, I think that's a good question. I think you can do both, right? Um, obviously, you know, we'll we'll see what LSU wants to do with their personnel groupings, right? Uh, are you going to run more 10? Are you going to run more 11 where uh, Jack is the tight end and the 11 personnel? 10 personnel, of course, is four wide receivers and no tight ends. And for me, uh, Jack's blocking last year, Blake, and it, it can always get better. But that was his first year ever actually being a blocker. Ever. 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 And he actually did fine. It, it was it was fine. Right. We don't you don't expect him to be George Kittle. Right. Well, it's so, like uh, he blocked more people on Facebook in his life before he uh, before he got to LSU uh, than he ever blocked on a lot of scrimmage. Right. So yeah, I I I I think Jack will mostly work out of the slot, and I still think he's going to play some hybrid tight end next year. All right, uh, Zach, firing another one. All right, this one's from Dylan Allen. Do you think we go after another QB to add after what Lacey said today? I like Dylan here. I, I need to know if he wiped the blood of the deer on his on his forehead. <laughs> Tell me, Dylan. I need to know. I need to know if he. I need Simba, to know. Uh-huh. Remember uh-huh. who you are. <laughs> <And ask. laughs> I love it. I love it. Huh? Oh, bro. Oh, God. It's so true. But look, that's a beautiful buck right there, Carter. I'm you. I mean, a beautiful buck. Nuck if you buck right. If we're gonna, if we're gonna. Hey, Dylan got him a nice buck right there, bro. Uh-huh. I'm telling you. 
All Dylan right, Dylan said he didn't. But yeah, really quickly here, Dylan. No, LSU's done uh, in my mind. Um, he didn't do it, Carter, very quickly. He said, I did not. Damn. He, he's he's going to have to kill another one and do it for us. So, what do you think, Carter? You think he needs to do that? Yeah, just do it, man. I know you're only supposed to do that. If Once you at, kill your first deer, right? Yeah, when you when you, when you you kill your first deer. But I'm telling you, Dylan, I, I love it, man. It's a, it's a great buck. But keep, keep him going, man. I'll, I'll get to as many as possible. Let's go. There we got um, Ricky Collette here. Uh, go ahead. He's asking, go ahead. Uh, QB's best friend is a running game. Are you excited about LSU's chances to run the ball better this year with Emory and other running backs? That's such a great question. Look at Rick. Good smile right there. I've gotten to know Rick a good little bit. He's such a good dude. Um, and I, I'm glad he's still supporting you, man. And Rick, Rick's come over to my channel as well. Oh, that, yeah. that was the that was the uh, slide over. Rick was a slide over. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I I appreciate you, man. Rick's Rick's a very sharp football mind. No, I appreciate you. A loyal listener is a loyal listener. Look at you. Well, what's What's really interesting though is I think it has more to do with the running concepts that LSU is going to do. Next I agree. Year. And Blake, this is going to make you feel uh, a lot better as an offensive lineman. There have been more studies that show that the blocking is way more important than the back actually running the football. Now, there are hold, hold, hold on one second. Hold on one second now. You mean to tell hold on. You mean to tell me that Ty Davis Price didn't do it on his own last year? He didn't. He did not. Okay, continue. Right. Okay. So look, there are very few running backs that move the needle big. Now you're lucky at LSU you have a lot of those guys, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Jay Hill's one of those guys that moved the needle. And obviously, you know, Leonard Fournette's the, the biggest example. But for the most part, you know, your offensive line is what really, you know, carries your running game. And no doubt, you know, the throw more so opens up the pass than the other way around. So um, you you got to find the guys that you really trust. And that starts with finding that next center will it be Delhi? I know Blake, you've been sharing a few times that Delhi might get some looks there. Uh, so Deli, that, Deli, baby, that that's that's you know that's step number one. Get get that done and then go from there. All right, last one, and then Carter, will, I promise you, we'll get out of here. Um, go to Derek Gordon's Zach, Derek Gordon there at the bottom. Yeah, uh, number but, one says, ask Carter, do you think Jaden Daniels is going to make believers out of all the people saying he won't make the cut in the SEC, even with the talent around him? There you go, Derek. Uh, Derek inspired me to get a cut today. I like I that, like man. That. Look, look like at that, that, Derek. That's, I mean, uh, Jawan Howard is scared of, of, of Derek Shea. <laughs> look at that. That thing is really sharp, man. I freaking love that. Uh, but yeah, no, dude, not Jawan Howard, bro. Dude, Jawan Howard and Jalen Rose, man. Everyone on the Fab Five, whoever the barber was in Ann Arbor, I like you, man. They they they, they kept everybody up tight there, baby. Uh, but look, I hope Jaden Daniels makes believers out of skeptics. I will say this: speaking to people that were around Notre Dame. Brian Kelly can get a little hot with his quarterbacks if the turnover issues don't get fixed. Uh, so that's the big thing. I have been very defensive of Jaden Daniels turnovers, but even he would admit the USC game in particular, those are two really bad picks. Uh, he has a tendency to throw interceptions on the first drives of games. Did that three times last year. It's unacceptable. That sets the tone right for the rest of the game. So, you know, that's going to be the biggest thing. We know Jane Daniels is a playmaker. First thing, you got to win the job. Uh, I, I'm not going to count Miles out. I'm not going to count you know anyone out at, at this point. But the second thing is obviously, can you fix that? That is a non-negotiable for a Brian Kelly coach team, right? The one major holdover, and all coaches say this, but Ed Orgeron was very turnover averse, right? That's why I love Danny. Very. Yeah, that's why I love Danny Antling so much. You know, Danny Antling only threw two inter interceptions his final year. So that's going to be the big thing. Fix the turnovers, and Jane Daniels can do big things. Just Jack Besh and, and Kayshawn and Dre and those guys, Malik, obviously, uh, was it's just a monster. And, and BTJ, hopefully he lives up to that potential that he has. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. But the turnover, it's just got to get cleaned up. Sleeper for me, Carter, and we'll get you out of here is Chris Hilton. 
That's my sleeper. Chris Hilton, baby. Let's go. Zachary, let's go. I love yeah. it, man. Chris Hilton. I'm, He's hearing, be fully I'm, hearing, I'm hearing some very interesting rumblings. Well, let's go, Chris. Let's very go. interesting rumblings oh, about Chris God. Hilton. You know, there's one thing, Carter, you can't teach on, on God's green earth. Speed. Now, that's what makes Rocky the movie Rocky 3 bullshit is because you can't teach speed and then all of a sudden he gets it. Apollo Creed is not Jesus Christ Almighty. So let's, you know, let's just put that to bed, right? Right. Yeah. It, look, speed's the most important asset you can have. And that's what's very interesting, Blake, is, you know, take a guy like um, like Landon Ibieta, right? That's probably his best attribute. You, you go look at that and um, route running, right? Yeah, route running, and, and he's just really, really, really fast. Like, he's definitely, <laughs> he can yep. fly. Uh, so, yeah, you know, speed is the most important thing. But we sometimes think of speed as 40-yard dash. Sometimes we think of speed as mile per hour. A lot of it is play speed and processing speed, right? And, look, I'm a big Jack Besh guy. The way he reads the game is so fast. It's very – I know he wears the same jersey number. I know I make the comparison all the time. It reminds me a lot of Jarvis Landry, how quickly Jarvis would process information on the field. You know, we, we remember the one-handed grab and creativity and all that stuff. But, you know, some people just have that ability, and Jack has that ability to just get in the open zone, right? Go okay. back to Texas A&M, fourth and 15. We got it. We, we need a play. We got to find someone to get a play. Jack just got open. It wasn't it, it, it wasn't reinventing the wheel. It was just getting open, getting past the sticks, getting out of bounds, and keeping that drive alive, right? We remember the Jure catch, but it was Jack who kept that drive alive. So, you know, that's that's a key thing. Not only play speed, but processing speed. That's what makes him Carter the Power Bryant. Follow oh. him on Twitter at Carter the Power Power Hour LSU. Um Dude, I love you so much, man. You're just so good at your job. That is what Colin Cowherd would call Big J journalism. Big J, baby. Huh? I love uh, it. Uh, uh, I missed the comment earlier. It said new camera who this. <laughs> huh? 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 So, so, Blake, uh, I will be live in a second. Uh, I, I do have a big announcement tonight on the channel, and um, I'm very fortunate to to have this opportunity and I'm very fortunate to have you as a as a friend. I wish people could listen to some of the conversations we have privately about oh god the, the, dude. Some, of our, some some of the prospects we like. We disagree on some guys. We like some some guys as well. I, I'm I'm telling you, man. And look, I'll say this. All right, I'll say it on your channel. I've even said this on my channel. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna get yeah, I'm, I'm, bring I'm, it I'm on my say, channel. I'm, I'm gonna say it. Okay, Xavier Thomas. I'm a believer. I wasn't a believer at first. And I know this is going to be one of those scenarios where he's going to go to Mississippi State and be a really good player, and everybody's going to be like, well, how did we miss out on, on Xavier Thomas, right? And I'm not going to be that guy. I'm just not because recruiting wide receivers are so tough already. There's only so many slots and targets to go around, uh, but that kid's going to be special. That kid is going to, that kid is going to be a beast. I just wish he didn't go to an SEC West school but leach is going to get that kid and and i i think xavian's going to be a, a 40 50 catch guy uh within his first two years if they could have heard our conversation monday our text and phone call if it were, were ever recorded would have been hotter than the carter three in 2008 oh man it would have been a it would have been the hottest mixtape of all time lollipop oh. little wayne would have nothing on the hot let the beat bill beer would not that, have anything on our conversation monday they, 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 they would have been like you know that meme there boy they would have been like what <laughs> what did this dude do to blow